In this video, we're going to be talking about the Recycler List View library. Now, this is a library that I recently tried and was very happy with. It is a high performance list view that you can use in React Native. It looks like you can also use on the web. Now, what I wanted to start with is the use cases of this because React Native already has a list view and a flat list. So I want to talk about when you'd actually choose this library over something like a flat list. And really the first thing that I used it for, and I would say the main use case, is when you need something more performant than a flat list. Or when I was using flat list, it started lagging on me. So I switched to this and was able to get much better performance with it. Then the second thing that I noticed was they actually have um, basically these grid layouts that you can make in the list view. So here I am rendering uh, one of the examples and you can see it's almost like a grid shape that you can create and basically two cells are being split but this is still just a list of items so you can kind of build more advanced layouts with this library um, where this would be more difficult to create in a flat list um, but it does come with some extra work that you have to do to actually set up a recycler list view so in general I'm still going to be defaulting to using a flat list or a list view um, but when I need either of those two things, I'm going to be using Recycler List View. All right, so let's jump into this now and kind of talk about some of the differences of it and how you can use it compared to a flat list. So what I'm going to be using is the sample that they have, Sample 1. This is under Guides, Sample Code, React Native. And I'll link this below if you want to grab this code. So I copied this into a React Native project, and that is what gets rendered over here. If you want to do the same, what I did is I did expo init, and then I went ahead and chose the uh, JavaScript blank template here. And then after that installed, I did yarn add recycler list view. Um, the other thing that I did is this library is uh, basically or the best version, or not the best version, but the one with the latest features is in alpha or is in beta. So I did at next at the end here. And then uh, I picked the this version right here, 2.0.1. Um, but you're, you're going to want at least version 2 because that has some uh, nice features. All right, so that is how you can add it to a project. We'll restart my bundler here. Um, so let's talk about how you actually uh, use the Recycler List View. So this takes three different uh, props. At least this is the minimum number of props you can pass in, I believe, to get it to work. So this should look familiar. You need to pass in a function that renders what the row looks like. You have to pass in this thing called a data provider. So this is an alternative to basically just passing in a regular array of items. You pass in a data provider instead. And then lastly, you have to pass in a layout provider. So we're going to talk about this data provider first um, and then look at the layout provider. So this data provider is being created up here and uh, actually it's first being created up here. So this is how you create a data provider. So you say new data provider, and this is something that is coming from Recycler List View. And given two different rows, so the first parameter is a function you pass in. Given two rows, you return how the rows are different, um, or you basically return if they are different here. So row one is not equal to row two. Now there may be other cases where you may want to not just do an equality like this. So for example, I might want to do dot ID is not equal to dot ID. So whatever you need to do to differentiate the items in the list. So for example, this particular list is just a list of items or numbers. So you can just do this check right here. Um, but you could do any number of check you want to do to check quality between the two rows to check if they're different. You could do a deep equals here, whatever you want. It's also good to note there is a second um, parameter you can pass in here to get a stable ID for each row. This is kind of like the key extractor from a flat list. Um, but I never was able to get this to work. Whenever I tried it out, I introduced bugs into it um, that would randomly pop up only in iOS. Um, this is still in uh, alpha, so I just uh, figured that there's probably some bugs in it, or maybe I was just straight doing it wrong. Um, but I was able to get great performance without even adding a stable ID, so I just didn't bother with that. 
But it's good to note this data provider, this function right here is very important to getting good performance. If you're uh, checked to see if two different rows is off, uh, you'll notice if you get it correctly, um, you're gonna get good performance this way. Anyway, so you have this data provider thing and then you need to actually put data inside of this thing. And what you do for that is you say data provider dot clone rows and this is how you add data to it. Now, if you ever want to update the data, you do the same thing. You say data provider dot clone with rows and you pass in your new data. All right, so you, you call this whenever you want to pass in initial data and set it for the first time or if you want to update it later. Um, and that's pretty much all there is to actually passing in the data that gets rendered here. Let's talk about the layout provider next. So I would say one of the things that makes the recycler view a little bit uh, different than a flat list or a little bit more complex is you need to know the dimensions of the cells, or at least you need to estimate them um, to get them close. The closer, the better the recycler list view can basically perform. Um, so what you do is you create a layout provider and that's one of the things that we have to pass to the recycler list view. Um, the first one here, um, this particular example, they're doing this kind of grid layout. So what they do is they are creating three different types of views. So they're creating a full, a half left, and a half right. So this is the half left, that's the half right. You can see this is the uh, full there. So that's how you can take the index and you can return what type of view it is. And this view types is just a simple uh, numbering system. Right, so they're assigning zero to full, one to half left, and two to half right. Now this is something that I personally didn't care about doing a grid layout. I personally just wanted single rows. So if you wanted to do something like that, you can just comment this out and in your index here, you can just return view types dot full, or you could just do zero, right? Whichever one you want. There the same thing. So now I just get a single row of items. Uh, the other parameter to this is, uh, this is how you assign what the different views are. Um, this is how you say what the size of each one of those views is. So you can see the half left is going to have a width and height of these two values. The half right is going to have this width and this height and the full is going to have this width and this height. Now how do you actually decide what values to put for your heights and your widths? So I'm not going to talk about advanced layouts. I'm just going to talk about, for example, if you want to do a list like this. So for that, we have a full, that's what this is. And so here you can see the width is equal to a width value. That is just the dimension of the window. So we can just use that. That's from React Native. That's this dimensions library. And then for the height, they have a hard code 140. So how did they actually get this value? Well, how I did it was I went and saw what I want to render for my row. So this is the row renderer. They render something a little different per what type of layout it is. But let's just take this full example. So what I did is I just rendered this. I'm going to comment this out and render this. And the data is going to be 1. And I'm going to come into here. So this is my cell container that's getting rendered. And I just said e dot or on layout, and I just did console.log e. So, what this does is when this um, view is laid out, we can see the event here, and I can see what the height of it is. Now, this looks like it's stretching the entire height. Uh, I'm wondering if it's because one of the styles on this. If I click on styles.container, nope. So I'm just going to try doing a view around this and maybe it won't stretch the entire width or entire height. Mm, now it's tiny. What if I do flex one on that? I think it's because we have flex one here. What if I get rid of flex one there? There we go. That's kind of what I wanted to display. Uh, anyway, we can see it's off the screen, but it at least is displaying. And I can see the height of it is 34. And so knowing that, I can then set that as my height here hard-coded. Again, this is an estimate, and there may be better ways to do this, um, but that is how I did it, is I just tried laying out one of my views and calling on layout on it to see what the height of it was in this native event. 
Um, anyway, so that is what you pass in. So if we scroll down here and we can uncomment that. And that is pretty much all there is to the recycler list view, at least the basics. There are some more props you can pass in and it has some more advanced features, um, but this is good enough to get you started and to give you an idea of when you wanna start using this. The only thing we didn't go over was this row renderer, um, but that's this right here. And uh, all there is, is to that is it takes the type and the data, so this, that's the current row, and it just returns a row. Uh, in this case, they're doing three different types of uh, things, but uh, you can definitely simplify this. Like in my code, I just do this. I just return one thing. And then this is, this is very similar to how you would do it in a flat list. So there you go. So that is the recycler list view. Give it a try if you need a more performant list view.